Well guys, let's go ahead and chat a little bit about this stock market that we have here today and what's going to happen with the stock market over the course of the next few weeks. Are we about to get into a rough market, a downtrending stock market? I mean, I know you guys have seen it. Dow posts worst day since October and turns negative for the year as coronavirus fears grow. I mean, look at the markets today. The Dow was down 1.57%. The S&P 500 was down 1.57%. The NASDAQ approached a 2% downward move here today. That was in the US markets. And actually, I'll start in the European markets last night, okay? The DAX was down 2.74%. The FTSE was down 2.3%. The CAC was down 2.7%. So Europe was actually even worse than the US. We actually had it easy here in the States here today as far as our markets go compared to how bad Europe had it. And keep in mind, the markets have been on fire for months now, so to all of a sudden get you know, a kind of a shakeup in the market, it kind of definitely rattles some investors out there because you get used to this market that's just going up, going up, going up. And then it's like, hey, 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 this isn't how the stock market works. We actually have some volatility here. Actually, the stock market does have some big downward moves, okay? Uh, and, uh, you know, plenty of stocks had pretty big, uh, just looking at some of the stocks that I track on a daily basis, either these stocks I either own or I track them for different various reasons. Uh, Neo stock made a 14% downward move here today. Winning Resorts, one of my investments was down over 8% today. Transcentrics was down 8%. Matsum Technologies was down 5.8%. AMC, the movie theater company, was down 5.6%. Capri Holdings, which owns several luxury brands, was down 5.62%. Plenty of names were down big today, okay? Even the almighty Apple. The almighty Apple. The stock that has been just about as hot as any stock out there, especially when it comes to big tech or the big, you know, Apple's the biggest of the big. The stock's been hot, you know, just for the past year, and especially for the last several months, made a 3% downward move here today. You know it's a rough day for the market when you see Apple stock down. What about that Tesla Maestro stock? I mean, does it get any hotter than Tesla stock? Even Tesla was down 1.2%. You guys know the market has to be rough for Apple and Tesla to go down, okay? Obviously, this is all in the back of the coronavirus. You know, this is kind of shaking up the market right now. It's definitely worrying a lot of investors. Is this gonna get a lot worse? Is this gonna be something that hurts earnings very bad come Q1 and actually it goes from a situation where we thought maybe a lot of companies would beat when it came to Q1 to maybe it's negative. I mean, obviously you guys have seen it's even in the States now. So it's not just something that's contained in China, okay? Now, if we look at something like the public account, okay, which by the way is available for everybody in my private stock market group. If you're interested in joining that group, link is down there in the description, okay? If we look at that particular account, a couple stocks come to mind as far as some big downward moves here today, okay? One was CCL Carnival Cruise Line, which I definitely welcome that because I'm buying this stock very heavily right now across all my accounts. So I'm, I'm like, okay, go down more, please, CCL here in the short term. But that stock made a 4.73% downward move here today, okay? CCL, that's Carnival Cruise Line, okay? And the other stock that really caught my attention was obviously Winning Resorts, which wasn't so winning today, okay? A, a, a negative 8% move for Winning Resorts. That's a very, very big downward move in a one day span for a stock like Win Resorts, okay? Now, what do both of those stocks have in common? Well, they both are travel and leisure related companies, right? Carnival Cruise Lines is a cruise company, right? They own different cruise lines all over the world. Now, keep in mind, their business has very little to actually do with China. They don't really benefit much from that. But if you think about the coronavirus and you think about just worries around like viruses spreading and things like that, it's going to affect how travel is done. And maybe people say, ah, maybe I don't want to travel. And so if you're thinking about travel and leisure stocks, short term over you know the course of a quarter or so it can hurt numbers very negatively when it comes to this okay obviously winning resorts you know they have you know obviously properties here in Las Vegas the city I live in right the win and encore they also have a property in Boston Macau is going through a very tough time with this whole coronavirus right now I mean you look at the win and encore properties that are in old Kotai and then you look at their best property which is called Win Palace which is in a new part of the Kotai strip right those are properties that count on Chinese customers coming there, okay? And, and the stock made a negative 8% move today. Well, Win Resorts, Las Vegas Sands, MGM Resorts, shares of major hotel and casino chains drop on fears of coronavirus would dent travel. Through the third day of the Chinese New Year holiday, Macau visits were down 60 
percent year over year according to Deutsche Bank. 60 percent, guys. We're talking about a massive, massive decrease. This isn't like, oh, you know, just a, a few less visitors. No, 60 percent less year over year, okay? Wynn Resorts was also downgraded by Bank of America to neutral from buy on Monday. The firm lowered its share price target to $150 per share from $160 per share. Shares of Wynn Resorts obviously fell huge. Las Vegas Sands were down huge. MGM's a little less reliant on China, so that didn't get hit quite as hard. They're a lot more Las Vegas strip related. And so if you guys didn't know, Chinese New Year's actually going on right now, okay? And this is kind of like a one to two week event. And Chinese New Year, a lot of people do a lot of gaming in Macau. They also come here to Las Vegas, the city I live in, to also game, but Macau's the big one. And when you're talking about the Chinese New Year, a big gaming holiday, and all of a sudden, you know, the Chinese citizens either can't travel or they don't want to travel because there's a risk that what if they caught the coronavirus? That's obviously something here in the short term that is a super big negative for any of these, you know, travel and leisure players, and especially, especially a name like Wynn Resorts that obviously gets the majority of their revenue and profits from the Macau region. So this is super, super negative for names like that here in the short term, okay? Now, what did we see in the VIX today? So the VIX, for those of you guys who do not know, essentially tracks volatility, okay? So think about, think about it in this terms. If the market's going through a really tough time, if there's a lot of people selling shares, a lot of funds selling shares and things like that, the VIX usually jumps. If there's a lot of volatility in the market, it's going crazy, right? And here today, the VIX was up 25%, a huge Huge move here today for the VIX up over 18. The VIX had been super, super calm recently. I mean, just look at the VIX recently. It'd been like around 14, maybe up to 15, but you know, a lot recently it'd been like the 12 range, which is extremely, extremely low for the VIX. Even some periods in the 11s recently, okay? Now to give you some context on the VIX, that is not natural that it is that low all the time, okay? A lot of times the VIX jumps way over 20, and when the VIX starts getting pretty high, you start getting into the 30 range, and if you're just wondering, like, like, what would you consider like the VIX insanely high? Well, go back to like October 1st, 2008, okay? <laughs> right, right kind of when the, the Great Recession was going on and it was just a ton of negativity in the market, ton of volatility in the market. The VIX was around a 60, okay? So, you know, to give you some reference, you know, an 18 here is nothing compared to a time period like that. I mean, a 60 for the VIX, I, you know, who knows, maybe we'll see a, a number like that again someday, but that type of number is just ridiculous, okay? Another time the VIX was very, very high. You go back to September 1st of 2011. The VIX was around a 43 at that particular time. So obviously very high for the VIX there as well. So although the VIX jumped a lot today, it is still nothing compared to the past, okay? So uh, when we're kind of thinking about the, all this, all this, you know, the kind of like the, the spike up here in volatility, kind of what's starting to go on in the stock market, kind of a little shake up here. And it's like, oh, well, by the way, this this doesn't just you know go up every day like this. We do have some volatility. This is a stock market, let's not forget. There are kind of like two things that really come to my head in, in this scenario, okay? The first thing I think about when I kind of think about what is, has kind of transpired today and what might go on over the next few weeks is we need this, man. We need this. I, I like. Uh, we need this in the market for, for kind of two reasons, okay? We need this in the market, one, because uh, like too many people think like the, the, their accounts should just go up every day and that this is the way the stock market like works and like, oh, I didn't gain 10% this month or shouldn't I make like 10% every month or something like that? We need this from an investor psychology standpoint that people you know don't get into this habit of thinking the stock market goes up every day and this expectation that your stock market account grows every single day, that is not the way the stock market works, okay? The name of the game in the stock market is to grow your account each year, hopefully. And especially if you look at a five or 10 year chart of your stock account, you should have seen a lot of growth. But in terms of a day to day, a week to week, or even a month to month, you should not expect your stock market accounts to grow every single day, every single week, or every single month. Time periods like that are super strange if you're getting that type of performance, okay? So I'm happy this is happening because we kind of need that shakeup. Also, I'm happy it's happening because 
we need some dang deals in the stock market. I mean, uh, just over the past, you know, several weeks, I've been looking at a lot of stocks and I haven't been able to find very many good deals. And all of a sudden, if we start getting a shake up here, a negative day like today, maybe a few more negative days over the course of the next, you know, few days or the next few weeks. Then we're starting to talk about some deals can start emerging in the stock market. And if you're coming from a buyer perspective, it starts getting more interesting. And recently, it's only been interesting from really a seller perspective with most of these stocks. Most of these stocks in the market recently have been at fair value or overvalued. And when you're talking about you're in that type of market, it's great if you're selling stocks, it's great if you're a seller stocks, but if you're, if you got cash on the sideline and you're a buyer and you want to buy, it is not fun to be buying stocks that are already fairly valued. And it's especially a bad idea to buy stocks if they're overvalued. And so we need this in the end. We need a shake up in the market. We need some volatility, man. We need this in a bad, bad way. Okay. Second thing that comes to mind is things are going to calm down. Okay. It's going to take one to four weeks and things will calm down. Just since I've been in the stock market for the past, you know, 10 years plus, right? I've seen a few of these virus situations and I remember the whole Ebola situation and a few others in the past. And usually this is something that shakes up the market for, you know, anywhere from about one to five weeks. Roughly, it causes some volatility. It causes a lot of stocks to fall short term. And sometimes it can actually hurt company earnings. Like we're going to see several companies be negatively impacted because of this coronavirus. So it'll definitely cause some negativity in the market and it'll likely continue to cause volatility for the next one to four weeks. And that'll create some buying opportunities into some great companies that you love for the long term and that's definitely good there. But in terms of if you think this is just gonna end tomorrow, from what I found with a lot of these virus situations, it usually doesn't. It usually has a peak period when there's just like the, the most like, like scared attitude out there in the market and from people and usually that comes anywhere from two to four weeks after everybody's you know kind of found out about this so everybody found out about this coronavirus last week so if you're thinking about a peak week for coronavirus it's likely going to be either this week or within the next three weeks that we get that peak period of, of kind of hysteria and worry about this and then likely things will start coming down after that period but it will actually hit some earnings you know a, a company like wind resorts it will hit some of the travel and leisure stocks and, and even things like I, I've Seen, I've heard news that uh, Tesla might have shut down their Shanghai Gigafactory. I've not fully looked into that yet, but obviously if the Shanghai Gigafactory is shut down for Tesla for one, two, let's say three weeks, that is something that will make the Q1 numbers not look as good for Tesla. So this is absolutely something that will have an effect on different companies out there. We're just gonna have to see how big of a negative effect this can actually have for companies that basically do business in China, which if you're investing in a lot of these you know, multi-global companies, they have some reliance on China. And that's obviously the region that's being hit the worst as of right now, guys. So, um, you know, it's, it's really interesting from a long-term buyer perspective, what's going on right now and what will likely go on for the next few weeks. Um, but obviously, if you're somebody that's worried about volatility in the market, then this is obviously not something you wanna see. It's not like you wanna wake up and see your accounts down, things like that. But from uh, a perspective like mine, that I love to buy stocks and I love to buy in great deals, like, you know, we, we need it something, there was gonna be something that happened eventually to shake up this market. It's not natural for the market to just continue to go up every single day. And it's not natural for your accounts to go up every single day. This is not the way the stock market works. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. Let me know your opinion on everything discussed in today's video in that comment section. I would love to hear from you guys as always. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up button if you enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.